Chris, I've been, of course, watching your social media feed where you, you know, communicate extensively and in great detail, I might add. You've been focusing on the Virginia political race. I, I almost characterize it as like beyond politic. Does that make any sense to you when I say that? Explain. Yeah. Well, so I feel like, you know, in t typical political races, there'll be, you know, basically the issues will be thrown around. I mean, you have, to me, you have like a middle of the road guy that's being portrayed as some kind of, I don't even like to say the word. Yeah. Right. And then you have, and, and you have just some patently, obviously false assertions being made that are, that are of profound consequence to society at large. Right. Yeah. So this, it, it, it just feels like it's a, a at another level than what I typically see in political races. Yeah, I, I'm feeling the same instinct. I think you might even call it uh, metapolitics. So it's a, a level of politics that is abstracted and above the typical horse race. So typically you have candidates, they debate, they put out ads, they attack one, one another, they put out their closing messages, we're going to do this, this guy's going to do that, and then they hold the election. But there are a lot of underlying themes and, and social processes that are pl at play in this race. And I'm the same way. I don't typically follow the campaigns and the polling and the numbers, but for me, my interest in the issue of critical race theory is deeply enmeshed in this actual horse race campaign. So for me, it's a symbol of the power and potency and reach of this issue that I've been working on, critical race theory, in addition to being really a, a test on what is the actual hard-nosed political messaging around this. And you get Glenn Youngkin drawing on this widespread frustration at critical race theory in the curriculum, at some of the corruption in the school boards. And then you get Terry McAuliffe and his allies in the media saying none of this exists. This is a, a fantasy. It's a dream. It's an illusion. Um, and taking things that, you know, I've provided documented, hard source evidence and just simply running around it um, because they don't have a good argument on this issue. It's funny, I almost never cover political races. This is just like a fascinating sort of microcosm of, I guess, to some extent, a lot of things that are happening in the rest of the country, right? And so, but, but one point which really struck me is just simply this idea of whether parents should have control over their children's education. I mean, it, it seems like me that's a kind of a very majoritarian position, like across the spectrum, political spectrum. And I, I'm just shocked this is a topic, right, in this election. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's been a conservative point for many years that uh, the school boards, the teachers unions, the bureaucracies uh, that, that are involved in education want to have greater control over your kids. It's another thing though to have a Democratic candidate for governor come out and say it. Parents should not have control over what's taught in the classroom. Uh, and then actually double down even uh, in the very last hours of before the election. He's saying, uh, everybody was applauding when I said that. I double down. I, I don't disavow the statement. Uh, school boards, bureaucrats, experts should decide for children what their education is and parents should stay out of it. And it's a huge shift because you have, you know, even thinking back to the Clinton years, you know, Clinton famously advocated for a return to school uniforms uh, as a centrist and very popular idea. Um, where he was trying to um, appeal to this broad middle, whereas McAuliffe is um, really huddled in the corner with people who truly and directly believe uh, that parents are an impediment to the development of correct politics, that parents are repressive and patriarchal in relationship with their kids, and that the state should take greater authority and almost unrivaled authority over the development of kids uh, beginning in pre-kindergarten at three, four, or five years old. And so the Virginia voters have a choice. He's laid it out clearly. Um, and obviously it's not the only issue, although it is the most Im important issue according to voters. Well, and so how is this connected to critical race theory? It's maybe obvious to some, but it's also a million dollar question to others, right? For, for two reasons. One is substantively uh, the suburban counties around DC and Virginia um, have 
spent a lot of time and money investing in critical race theory pedagogies. So actually teaching it as a direct subject, but also teaching through it, using it as a, a pedagogical framework or lens, incorporating the insights and principles of critical race theory into the everyday teaching. And, um, you know, this is corroborated, proven by documents. Even the last time Terry McAuliffe, the Democrat, was governor, his own Department of Education was promoting critical race theory to schools. In 2019, under this current Northam administration, uh, the superintendent endorsed critical race theory in a letter to all the superintendents around the state. And then in places like Loudoun and Fairfax County, they're hiring consultants at $625 an hour in one instance to help them implement critical race pedagogies. Uh, and then there are real uh, grievances on behalf of parents to say, hey, wait a minute, what we've seen because of the pandemic, what we've seen because of our document requests, is that the suburban schools, again, around D.C., Fairfax County, Loudoun County, are promoting a, a malicious and intentional pedagogy that's designed to reduce people to a racial category, assign guilt and blame to individuals based on their uh, relationship, whether it's uh, skin color or ancestry with historical crimes. And then in, in one really horrible incident, um, the school board in Loudoun County was covering up uh, a sexual assault and then another sexual assault. And so when you add that together, critical race theory with safety, with an out of control bureaucracy, with secrecy, actually the Loudoun County uh, superintendent even requested undercover police officers to monitor parents who are expressing disagreement at school board meetings. When you put that all together, Virginia has become this flashpoint in the critical race theory debate with parents uh, mobilizing to say, we want to get a great education, we want to teach a, a full, accurate, and honest look at American history, but we don't want you essentializing our kids. We don't want you filling our kids with either guilt and shame or pessimism and despair. And McAuliffe, other institutions, um, have been caught off guard by this. They have no response, so they've reverted to this very defensive uh, uh, strategy of just denial. Deny that it happened, deny that it exists, deny the documents, deny the evidence, deny the parents. And they think that because in Virginia they're the majority structurally in a partisan way, they think that they can simply just ignore the issue. But if the polls emerge uh, as they are trending, which is in favor of these parents, um, that proposition could be easily uh, proven false. Maybe you can actually update me because I, I don't know what the newest sort of reality is around this, these sexual assaults that you're describing. Has that been, you know, sort of demonstrated unequivocally that it's true? Like where, where, where does this stand? That's right. It's in the Loudoun County Public Schools, a, um, a young male, a gender fluid male dressed in a skirt, according to uh, court transcripts and, and, and reported stories, um, uh, initiated a sexual encounter uh, with a student, a uh, female student with whom he had had a previous encounter, um, but then uh, was rebuffed and then forcibly uh, assaulted this young girl, I think 14, 15 years old. And, I mean, a horrific thing, And but even adding a compounding evil, I think, is that the school board, rather than immediately uh, uh, take this alleged, at that time, predator out of the schools, simply transferred him to another school where he committed another assault. And then, to add even more kind of insult to the victims and victims' families, uh, the school superintendent lied about it, covered it up, uh, denied, then, then the school board officials denied that it even happened. And so you have this father who is uh, destroyed, deeply hurt, the father of the, the young girl, understandably lashing out at a school board meeting and saying, you're lying, my daughter was assaulted, you're lying about it, and you need to come clean about what you've done, putting other kids in danger. And he was uh, uh, restrained by police and then portrayed as a domestic terrorist. Um, I mean, adding uh, uh, this other layer of cruelty to a s situation that was already uh, deeply corrupting and deeply uh, wrong. And so parents are not only saying what's happening with the curriculum is hurting our kids intellectually, uh, morally, uh, as far as their pursuit of knowledge, but actually you're putting our kids at physical danger and then covering it up. And this has now been proven in uh, court. Uh, the young man was found guilty of this crime, admitted it to law enforcement. And so there's this reckoning where people are saying, 
if we don't have a sense of safety in our schools, you're really losing the legitimacy of your authority. So, you know, this is, and you're sort of suggesting here that this is all connected, right? Like the critical race theory element, this, this sort of this cover up, there's a sort of, you know, I ideological, connected ideological bent, I guess. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And, and you know, it's uh, substantiated by the documented evidence. I mean, we know that they lied about the sexual assault. We know that they covered it up. Uh, and then we know that uh, they've maintained this absurd state of denial. I mean, you can go on the Virginia Department of Education's website right now. They specifically endorse critical race theory. They call it a best practice. They endorse literature that says critical race theory in education. They derive their definitions for their equity program explicitly from critical race theory. It's on their website right now, and yet they're maintaining this denial. So when there's denial across these two axes, one is school safety, sexual assaults, um, and the other one is curriculum and uh, critical race theory, pedagogy, you have to wonder, it's the same people perpetuating the lie, covering up the truth, um, what is their motivation? And if they are committed to lying to parents, even in the face of overwhelming evidence, what else are they lying about? What else are they covering up? What are their real intentions?